Are you looking to start a podcast? Then see this episode's show notes for our unique promo code to get up to two months of free podcasting service with Libsyn when you sign up for a new account. Get your show on Apple and Spotify. Get helpful audience building stats and all the support you need to sound your best. They can even do video. Bring your podcast to life and have your voice heard here, there, and everywhere with Libsyn. Again, see our show notes for our unique Libsyn promo code and get podcasting. You're listening to Creek Beaks Podcast. So it begins again. Welcome back to the Creep Beaks Podcast, Season 7. Episode 282. Three-legged wampus cat thing. Three tribes of the Cherokee little people. Animals attacking. Yes. So here we are again. Welcome back to the Creep Geeks Podcast. If you've uh, listened before. If you haven't listened before, it's uh, good to see you. Good to hear you. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome. I'm Greg. I'm Omi. And we, uh, we're we going to talk to you for a while about some very interesting things. <laughs> okay. I'm just, letting, I'm just setting the expectation. So here, anyway, here's the deal. Uh, this podcast talks about all sorts of stuff. Paranormal stuff, weird stuff, just things we find to be interesting and some things that we've experienced and everything else in between. Yeah. We throw some tech in there and some other things too. So, pretty much, uh, we have a, uh, a sort of a varying degree of topics that we talk about. The ones that we enjoy the most are the ones that we hear from people. Yeah. And when we hear uh, information that comes in, whether it be stories or whatever from people, we like that. We put that in the podcast. And if you have something that you'd like to share with us, there's a telephone number that you can call. And that if, phone number, it's going to be 575-208-4025. Right. It's uh, toll free. So if you're older than me, and you're like, I want to hope it's a long distance, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> you're fine. Now, also, if you want to leave a, a text message, you can certainly do that. And we do have a Facebook group uh, where you can just kind of search Creep Geeks and you'll find us where you can interact with us there and Instagram and everything else in between. Mm-hmm. We have a Patreon group. If you'd like to join that, because uh, our patrons are amazing and they have wonderful support, uh, even Mr. Uh, Mr. Mark, who uh, and Prospero actually both caught the spelling <laughs> error. Prospero hits us up on our YouTube channel whenever we, because we post our episodes on YouTube and you can just listen. Yeah, because they're hashtag listenable, right? Right, and they actually, and, sh- and shockingly enough, uh, YouTube finally figured out, hey, we could put podcasts on here, and it's yeah. in a podcast playlist, and there's a bunch of our episodes where. Our last episode talked about orcas attacking. Mm-hmm. Well, I typed okras at- attacking. You know, I think it's... I looked at it like a bunch, and I'm like, something's off, and I, can, I just, whatever. I rolled with it and got, I, I guess I got caught. I do appreciate that we hear from Prospero twice a year. Yeah, No, it's no, it's more yeah. than that. Well, yeah, but so. I can count on twice a year. Happy holidays, and what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He blasted me, and I started to respond to him, and I didn't. I was like, oh, I'm going to go fix that, and I didn't fix it. And then Mark got me. Oh, but he made a nice little graphic for us. Oh. Yeah. With a, <laughs> basically a jet ski boat with a bunch of okras attacking it in its wake. I thought it was amazing. Mm-hmm. So uh, we do we do appreciate that, and we appreciate being called out for things like that. Uh, next time, feel free to call about when Omi does it, though. I mean, that would be cool. Really? Yeah. Oh, it's okay. fair. It's share and share alike or whatever, man, whatever, however that goes. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so we have a couple different things to talk about. Uh, one of the things I do want to let you know is, you know, we, our podcast name is creep geeks. Yes. Paranormal and weird news podcast, or just creep geeks. Sure. Whatever is easier. So when we come across some geeky stuff, we got to tell you about it. Okay. And you know, this kind of goes with, we don't want to talk about too much geek stuff or tech stuff because, I mean, really, it's only interesting to people who like that kind of thing. Okay. A lot of people don't. A lot of people could care less about gadgets and gizmos, which, and that, you know, and that hurts my soul. Because I, I love gadgets and gizmos. We're in an office full of them, and they're just replicating. I, this, is, this is where I bite my tongue. Why? 
because I, I work out in the public. So there's moments where I'm just like, I want to say something. And then I realize. You can say it here. <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> just go ahead. <laughs> because I have to realize not everybody is like us or even like me. And I mean, I pretty much grew up in a tech heavy household, you know? Well, and you know, and I'm older. Here, you know? Here's the deal. You grew up in a household. Okay. And there were people in there who liked tech. Okay. And you know, same thing. I grew up in a kind of a techie household, but it was more me that was driving the tech. Yeah. You know, I have youngsters, they grew up in a tech household and yeah. for the most part, you know, they're tech savvy enough. Yeah. Right. So the excuse that people are like, well, I just don't do... It's 2023. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. We're, we're to the point where it, for basic things, you know, okay, so like we don't... I don't have the expectation that everybody knows what we know, you know, and, and like, you know, do you know what PDF stands for? <laughs> you know, well, yeah, it's portable document format. Really? You know, yeah. are you sure it's not pretty damn fine? Oh, you God. Know? Whatever. Yeah. So what we've been doing is we collect the stuff that we need to go out and try to do things and take pictures and stuff like that. And eventually it gets to the point where you either don't have enough or you run into a situation where you're like, man, I really need, I really needed this particular piece of gear because I have one, but it's not enough because I should have had two, possibly even three. Right. Mm -hmm. And so if you're trying to plan ahead, you're like, I need to get a couple of these things. That way it won't happen to you again, where you are lacking in whatever it is you need to do, what you got to do. Now, you know, some of the people that listen to us, you know, they do photography, they take pictures, they make movies, Yeah, you know, and you know who I'm talking to you guys. And so when I ran across what I consider to be, um, a great deal that can still be disposable, I'm going to put it in here. And I thought about it. I'm like, should I even put this in here? So what it is, it's a link. And since this tripod base tripod, I gave it away. <laughs> since this episode is basically about three legged things. Yeah. You know, there is a tripod company called three legged thing that makes these amazing tripods, but you know, tripods are three. Yeah. We're not talking three legged things. Those are expensive. Yeah. What I actually found is, is that on Amazon, if you look for a, a tripod, a decent tripod, I mean, decent as in it's not rickety, right? And it's not Amazon's best or whatever, which is usually you know, catered by the people that buy them and the people that are buy tripods, you know, if they're beginning, they don't spend a lot of money and they typically buy plasticky, you know, creaky things to sort of put their cameras on or their phone, or now they're using like light stands and just attaching their phone to anyway, this is a decent little tripod. All right. Mm -hmm. And so when I seen it, I'm like, I'm going to bite the bullet. I'm going to buy this tripod because what I found is this particular tripod is sort of the entry level or maybe half a step up from entry level sort of generic tripod that a lot of companies are selling, like Small Rig. Yeah. Benro is selling it. Hmm. Yeah, there's a couple companies that are selling the same tripod. Yeah. May have a different name on it or a different, you know, uh, embellishment, like a color or whatever, but it's the same tripod. And I'm like, well, I found it because I do that. My time on Amazon, I'll find a product that I'll see repeated like five or six or seven times all over the place and then say, oh, so what it is is somebody is supplying the same product and five or ten people, resellers, drop shippers, or whatever, have picked up on this and they're selling exactly the same thing at varying price levels. Mm -hmm. I have a YouTube channel called Cheap Geek. And I'm looking for the cheapest price, but I still want a little bit of quality. So anyway, I found this particular tripod, found it being replicated everywhere. It's the same tripod from the same company, and I bought one. Okay. And I'm like, wow, this looks exactly like our Manfrotto tripod. Except the head's slightly different. Because if you're not familiar with photography and video, a lot of times you buy a tripod, you just buy the legs because the legs are one thing, and then you buy the head separately, and you kind of put them together, right? Yeah. So anywho... I found the tripod, I looked at it, clicked on it, had a 50% off coupon, I bought it. I'm like, if this is even half as good as what we currently have, it'll be okay. And so the main criteria is, is if I left our Manfrotto tripod somewhere, we're going back to get it. Yeah. I keep dropping Manfrotto because it's an exp it's relatively expensive tripod. I mean, for being lightweight, travel, portable, all that stuff, I mean, we're all in like, I don't know, 400 bucks on this tripod, <laughs> which I know is inexpensive, Comparative, but for what we're doing, a four hundred four hundred dollar tripod, you know, with a separate head, and is perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not making motion pictures. You know, 
So we got it. And I'm like, wow, the bag that this thing comes in is 20 bucks by itself. And I'm like, man, our man Frodo didn't come with a sweet bag, you know? So anyway, used it, checked it out. I'm like, all right, it's not as polished, but it's just as good. It's 79 inches tall. It's aluminum. It's not carbon fiber. Yeah. Yeah, 360 degree panoramic ball head. It comes with the basically it's an all in one. So you can make a monopod out of it. It's a tripod. It works good for whatever. And it has a 17.6 pound load on it. So you can put a heavier camera. Right? It's not these little rickety things. I know you think I'm going on too long, but I'm not because I'm excited. You know why? Why? This tripod is 19 bucks. Okay. $19. The little zipper bag even has reflective stuff on it. So you can see it hanging on the back of somebody's car as they drive away because you left it on the roof of it because you <laughs> weren't paying attention, right? <laughs> so anyway, with all that being said, I think it's a great deal. It's an awesome little tripod for the price. I mean, it's kind of sporty. It's black and red, converts into a monopod, doesn't have foam and weird stuff on it. It's, it's a decent tripod. And it has little twist locks, and whether you like cam lever locks, or the, whatever, man, it's good. It's solid. It holds the weight. It's 20 bucks. You can buy exactly the same tripod on Amazon for $79 all the way up to $169 when really it's $20. Yeah. So there you go. We have a link in our show notes, and everything that we talk about on our podcast is in our show notes. So if you want one of these things, click on it. Spend the 20 bucks. If you think you have somebody that's in photography and they're maybe getting to where they need to be a little bit more serious about it, and that little rickety creaky tripod is not working, show them the link. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we have tripods that we use. We have our little DVR set up and stuff that's super rickety, right? Because it doesn't have to be important. But if I'm going to put, you know, I don't know, a $1,000 camera body on it, or in some cases, some of the stuff we have is like $2,000. I kind of want it to be able to stay there. Yeah. And not just like have a little, and just flip over. You know, because people are always shocked when their tripod falls over, right? You know who's yeah. not shocked? Somebody who spent 300 bucks on a tripod. And knows that there's a little, little spot down there to hang a backpack or something to give you a little bit of weight. So it doesn't, they're not shocked. Yeah. And here's something to think about too. The average phone is like a thousand bucks. Actually, it's more now. They did some article recently saying how, like, the newer phone oh kind of push the limit to, like, 2800 You know what? Here's the deal. They can push all they want. Yeah. And when they hit 28 bucks, if they don't have a way to get that thing cheap and up front, people are going to be like, you know, I, I've had this phone for two years, and it's still amazing. Yeah. I'm not upgrading nothing. And, see, that's their problem because they've already hit that. But they're doubling down because there was a recent article, and this isn't going to be in the show notes because I, I read it like three weeks ago, and it was talking about the new spoilers for the new iPhones yeah, and the new price points, how the price points leaked, and how uh, one big news organization said, so, are, do you have a comment on this? And they're like, we will. And they said, well, do you want to, you know, maybe backpedal on this yeah. or anything? And like, no, in fact, you should reach out to major phone carriers because it, they reached out to Apple and Apple said, no, go ahead and ask, you know, T-Mobile, Sprint, people like that. And they did. And they were like, yeah, we've been told the price point. Unfortunately, most people are not taking advantage of our trade-in programs like Up and T-Mobile's plan. I can't remember what it's called. I think it's called Up. It used yeah. to be called Jump or something like yeah. that or whatever. And, and like a lot of these cell phone companies – especially in areas like Western North Carolina, people are like, okay, first off, cell phone signal, everybody was promising during the pandemic, our internet and our cell phone would get better. It's now 2023. I have this expensive 5G device. Nothing's happened. Why should I bother to upgrade? Yeah. And it's it's not just Western North Carolina. It's other rural areas where we were all convinced during the pandemic, well, at least I've got a good phone to get me through this crisis. Yeah. No. Um, yeah, well. And now they're like, well, we don't care. We're going to put that $2,800 price tag on some of these phones. And I'm like, man, that is that is literally, I could fully kit out a decent camera, like decent entry-level camera. So, yeah. For that price. So, and get a $19 tripod. 
<laughs> yeah, it's a decent tripod. I like yeah. it. You know, it's you know, it's not carbon fiber, but at the same time, and here's the deal: maybe you're out in the woods and you're like, I'm going to set up a little tripod, do some video, whatever. And a bear surprises you and maybe runs up your driveway, or you think it's Bigfoot coming your way, or whatever. You can just grab your camera and roll out. Who cares about that $20 tripod? If we get down the road and you're like, oh, man, I think we left the tripod. If it's not the Manfrotto that we spent 400 bucks on, I'm like, hey, good well, thing I've got four of them. Remember last year on our TikTok channel, I got the uh, raccoon that walked right up to the cheapo tripod we had and just knocked it over all yeah. angry. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So, I mean, so if you spend 80 bucks, you get four tripods. That's crazy, <laughs> right? That, that's not even, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So if you do the math, I spent four hundred bucks. What's twenty into four hundred? You can get twenty of them. That's a lot. What do you, what would you do with all those tripods? Anything you want. You get. I mean, yeah. I don't know. It, so, all right. So speaking of three legged things, we actually have some audio. Okay, so Omi's been doing the old Fort One Fifty project, where basically it, it's it's people talking about growing up and sharing stories. It's an oral history archive of various lives in Old Fort. So it's not just the individual's life. They could be talking about their family history or some genealogy. Uh, we've had a couple of people come in and share, you know, like uh, the Lytle family as an example. They've, they were one of the very first families here in Western North Carolina. Not in, you know, the county we live in. Nobody but, cares about that. How long? Yeah. Uh, since the 17, like 1738 or something like that. Yeah. So yeah. It's, that's pretty like, long time. Yeah. Like the first, you know? Um, but so they come in, they'll share like an oral history of how their family got here. They'll share like anecdotes or journals from how hard life was back then. Yeah. And so it's, it's interesting if you're, you know, really into history um, if you're not, it, it's still good to listen to some of the history of your community. You yeah. Know? Anyway, anyway, who cares? Yeah. Who cares about all that oh. stuff? We have a story. Okay. Yeah. So we've talked about the Wampus Cat and Wampus Cat's kind of one of those things. It's been pretty popular, uh, for a while all over the place, places like Alabama and in the South, right? Yeah. Basically. And us and even up North. So anyway, um, she told us the story. She was talking to, and it was being recorded for the oral history project, right? Yeah. But she told a story of how her family ran into a cryptid, a real cryptid. Yeah. And in this, I don't want to give it away, okay? I mean, you're going to figure it out, but um, it's a cryptid that could be confused with the wampus cat and vice versa. I mean, who knows exactly if it is one thing, least, you know, if they're the one and the same, I guess. So what we did was, is we recorded it, of course, and we actually asked, hey, can we play this? And she said, we got permission, basically. Yeah, yeah go ahead and play it. So it's about, I think, 12 minutes. And really, keep in, just keep this in mind. It's actually for a different project, so some of the, the th uh, some of the conversation may not quite make sense. She's not telling the story straight all the way through because she's providing amplifying information, but... Anyway, we thought we would uh, we thought we'd play it. We've talked about it in the podcast, and there was an incident here uh, in the small town, right, where Wampus Cat attacked and killed dogs, and it's been reported these two little towns for a while. Yeah. And here we have an instance of uh, basically being passed down from the family, like, "Hey, yeah, check this out," and we're like, "What?" Yeah. Yeah. At that point, I was all in. I'm like, yeah, I got to listen. So uh, we thought we'd go ahead and play it. So that's what we're going to do. So it's going to take about 15 minutes or so. So if you need to get a little drink of water or whatever, you can hit pause and come on back. Otherwise, you can roll with it. So here you go.
Yeah. Yep. Very excited that we got that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. Well, I mean, okay, so we've we've heard a couple, you know, um, places and people, and oh, there's no big cats out here. And it's like, well, why do you have like home of the catamount and all this stuff with different colleges and stuff? Yeah. Right here, Wampus Cat and Catamount. And, Catawampus. And Catawampus. Yeah, all that stuff. And it's like, yeah, man, I, I, I think I, there is because everybody everybody we talk to, oh, they're not, but we, we've seen one. So, yeah. You know, it's like, okay, well, how many of these large black panthers or panthers, and, and pan, black panthers considered a cryptid. But anyway, how many of these things have to uh, be spotted or whatever before they finally go, yeah, there's big cats here. Now, allegedly, and this wasn't on the recording because we were packing up. But she had mentioned that that particular large cat was basically stalking more than her family. It was stalking other people who worked at that place that walked along that road. Uh, yeah. So at one point, what functioned as the local news um, in the area actually had done a small article warning people of the dangers of, you know, walking down the road, coming home from your, you know, your job. So, you know stick together and stuff yeah so i've been i've been trying to dig through some of the local news archives to find that article and i might have a lead so yeah so yeah there you go so uh three-legged thing it's kind of crazy get leg shot off so uh, we thought we would include this podcast was originally going to be about all like threes right yeah it just happened to work out that way uh (laughs) our last podcast we talked about um animal attacks and you know, how the okras were attacking right <laughs> the wild okras and so uh and it seems oh, since that podcast there's been a couple different instances of animals attacking and we're going to talk about those right quick before we jump into the three tribes of the cherokee uh little people so you had a bear attack in arizona mm-hmm. and you know the bear kills this guy so i mean that was pretty yeah they say it was an uncommon and strange circumstance involved with this bear attacking this 66 year old Tucson man. Yeah. They say it was an unprovoked attack. And so, you know, mostly we, we've got bears around here. Evidently we put a video up of, you know, our, our uh, family neighbor say, Hey, there's a bear running up your driveway. And she actually shot yeah. it with some, uh, shot it with her phone. Yeah. And so, you know, so, and it kind of ran up and ran down through the road. And uh, it sort of disappeared, so that was pretty exciting. So, basically, uh, the county sheriff's office out there started receiving 911 calls about 8 o'clock in the morning, right? Mm-hmm. About a man being mauled by this bear. Yeah. And so, law enforcement found the bear and the man. Both and Both dead, dead right? Yeah. And so, this guy had been building a home uh, in the dense wooded area. And what happened next, they said, is, is basically was not sparked by any known provocation. So, this lady, Kristen Green, told the sheriff's office, she's like... Uh, he was sitting at a table having coffee somewhere. A bear, a black bear, full-grown male, came out of nowhere and with no provocation basically started attacking him. Yeah. And there's other witnesses to it. The bear dragged him 75 feet. Oh. And so the neighbors were like honking the horns and stuff and so the bear would not disengage. And finally, a, a neighbor shot him dead with a rifle, the bear. Yeah. And they still don't know what actually sparked the attack. It was a very clean campsite. Because when I was starting to read, I'm like, okay, so maybe he left food out or whatever, and the bear is hungry. Yeah. Uh, but it says it was very, a very clean campsite. There was no food out, no grease. There was no water. So why did this bear decide that's it, right? I'm attacking yeah. him. It's like, and there's been no reports of aggressive bears in that area leading up to the attack. And so they say, as far as we can tell, this is an incredibly uncommon and strange circumstance. Yeah. Right, and the bear will be tested for positive or for possible sickness. Gosh, that's crazy. Yeah, so I mean, it's like, well, all right, so we got whales attacking. Now we got this bear attack. It's just coming out of nowhere. And then, so then you sent me this article about aggressive bear encounters. Oh, and it's I've got a little bit of an update on that if I can find it. But well, go ahead because yeah. this is in our neck of the woods off the Blue Ridge Parkway. So aggressive bear encounters force trail closure off the Blue Ridge Parkway. Now, just to sum up this article, the Bull Mountain Trail off the Blue Ridge Parkway near Asheville um, is being closed off for all use for a whole half mile of that trail section. 
and that is because of an increase in dangerous bear encounters, according to the National Park Service. Now, you know, I just read you the name of the trail, but for us and for anybody who's been out there, that's really close to, like, commonly accessed places on the Blue Ridge Parkway. Yeah. So to have that happen, like, an increase in aggressive bear activity on the trail, and, I mean... One instance, an unleashed dog provoked a bear to attack an a leashed dog. And then the resulting injuries from the encounter, unfortunately, led to the dog being put down. Um, there's been other encounters invar- involving large bears, charging hikers. Um, and then uh, more bear and dog encounters. We saw I saw a video probably earlier this week where they were showing um, the uh, Great Smoky Mountains National Park. And there was this very popular trail. National Park Service had installed a trail camera. The trail camera had video, and the video shows uh, two people walking past the trailhead with the, you know, the pretty trail, welcome to the trail sign. And then a dog, an off-leash dog, walking behind them a few feet. Not even, according to the trail camera, three minutes later, a mountain lion walks past. Yeah. And then a minute later, a bear walks past and then an elk and then the mountain lion circles around and then immediately, like barely a minute, the dog comes back and they just missed each other by seconds, Yeah, you you know, or barely minutes, you know? So to have all that happen um, within a very short period of time and then the update I've been trying to find is that another section closer to where one of our Patreon patrons has been sending us info is also being closed. Mm -hmm. So I'm struggling to get those. Oh, there it is. Aggressive bear forces Appalachian trail camping ban near hot springs. Yeah. Yeah. So, Mm. and they're saying so far, um, 25 reports of bear human interactions on the parkway. Yeah. Which they say is about average. And typically (laughs) the, the park responds to between 60 and 70. Yeah. And here's the thing. Like, Does that include, because it's the Blue Ridge Parkway, but does that include Great Smoky Mountains National Park? Because people like to split hairs Mm, in the state. No, I don't think so, because where they're talking is 100 miles away. Okay. Because some people Uh, But this is more towards like Asheville and stuff. So, you know, like where that one where they sort of talk about the aggressive activity is close to the actual uh, folk center. Yeah. Which is right there. I mean, people go there all the time. So it's it's not like it's a it's a thing. So I thought that was pretty strange. It's like wow. So we got bear attacks in Arizona. We got more bears here. We had a bear run up the driveway. We got okras attacking boats. <laughs> right? It's kind of <laughs> like what's going on? Yeah. So yeah. So it kind of goes in three. So I guess you had the third for that one. But uh, kind of thought we put a couple different things about some Cherokee stuff since we were kind of running into. Um, that area, I guess, and it's just something that I think has been pretty interesting. And we're going to talk about the little people of Cherokee and the three tribes that make up the little people. Uh, and why the turkey gobbles. Oh, okay. Something you've always wanted to know, right? Sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, so this is a co- according to Cherokee legend, and I don't know where the legend comes from. In other words, I don't know where this information comes from about this legend. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Okay. So it talks about the little people of Cherokee are a race of spirits who live in the rock caves on the mountainside. They're little fellows and ladies, and they get, they're almost reaching your knees. So they're about knee height, mm-hmm. whatever, it, whatever that winds up turning into. I don't know what the average height of a knee is, but they're just saying they're small, right? They're not like. Let's just say two feet. I don't know. I, see, now I want to pull out one of our 15 tape measures I can't find and look, but uh, they're well-shaped and handsome, right? And their hair is so long that it touches the ground. They're very helpful, kind-hearted, and great wonder workers. They love music and spend most of their time drumming, singing, and dancing. They have a very gentle nature, but do not like to be disturbed, mm-hmm. right? Sometimes their drums can be heard in lonely places in the mountains but it is not safe to follow it for they do not like to be disturbed at home and they will throw a spell over the stranger so that he is bewildered and loses his way and even if he does at last get back to the settlement he is dazed ever after 
Huh. That sounds familiar. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, sometimes they also come near your house, right, at night. And the people inside can hear them talking. But if you hear them talking, you can't go out. Like, don't go outside, right? And in the morning, you find stuff like corn gathered or the field cleared as if a whole force of men had been at work. And if anyone should go outside to watch, he'll die. And this reminds me of the shoemaker elves, right? That the is. shoemaker elves would come and they'd make all the shoes and stuff. And that, that's very close to the whole don't go out at night, like the, the Navajo. Yeah, something's out there. Yeah. Yeah. Like Navajo and Lakota have similar And regular stories. Appalachian people yeah. have it too. Like if you hear something, don't go out there. Yeah. Uh, when a hunter finds anything in the woods, such as a knife or a trinket, he must say, little people, I would like to take this. Because it may belong to the little people. Right? So you want to get permission if you're going to take stuff, right? Uh-huh. And it says, and if he does not ask for the permission, they will throw stones at him as he goes home. Okay, now I'm upset. Yeah. Uh, some little people are black, some are white, and some are golden like the Cherokee. And sometimes they speak in Cherokee, but other times they speak in their own, they're going to call it Indian language, and some call them brownies. Oh, and remember three, four episodes ago, episodes ago, somebody like we called them brownies, like little people, brownies, brownie elves, that kind of yeah. thing. And there was a delicious chocolate drink called brownie chocolate. Yep. It's kind of like you who, but better. And the little people are here to teach lessons about living in harmony with nature and the others. And there's three kinds of little people. This is where I thought it was kind of interesting because you don't catch this too often. And this is the stuff that I kind of learned when I was a little kid, but you kind of grow out of it. Um, you have the laurel people, the rock people, and the dogwood people. Right? Really? The rock people are the mean ones. They practice getting even, and they'll steal children and the like. Uh, but they're also like this because their space has been invaded. If you compare this to fairy lore and folklore and stuff like that, you've got the ones that snatch kids. Mm-hmm. But usually they have to be wronged first. You know, yeah. It's kind of the same thing, right? Uh, the laurel people... They play tricks and are gen- just generally mischievous. And you'll find, you know, when you find children laughing in their sleep, the laurel people are humorous and they always enjoy sharing joy with others. So they're the ones that will tickle you when you're sleeping and, and hopefully give you good thoughts, right? Yeah. Uh, then you, the last one was the dogwood people. They're good and they take care of people. And so the lessons taught by the little people are clear. The rock people teach us. Uh, that if you do things to other people out of meanness or intentionally, it will come back to, uh, come back on you. So you need to respect people's other people's limits and boundaries, right? Uh, the Laurel people teach that we shouldn't take the world too seriously, and we must always have joy and share that joy with others. And the lessons of the Dogwood people are simple. If you do something for someone, do it out of goodness of your heart. Don't do it to have people obligated to you or for personal gain. So in Cherokee beliefs, many of the stories contain references about the little people, and these are people who are supposed to be small mythical creatures, and 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 different and in different beliefs they serve different purposes, and a lot of those stories and legends about the little people, and then you can kind of see these people out in the forest, like you may out, be out in the forest and see them, right? And they can talk and even look a lot like Indian people, except they're only about two feet high, or even smaller, and the little people can all can be very helpful, and they can also play tricks on us. You know, there's three types of mushrooms. Some grow under dogwood trees, some grow under laurel trees, and there's a whole bunch that grow up near rocks. Yeah, and you know, when we went up on the on the property there and found those like four trees growing together, creating a pool. There, there was a name for that kind of thing. It's not fairy pool. I don't know what it is. It's been so long I can't find it. Where it's like you're in a fairy area, or a little people area, if you don't want to say fairy or fay or whatever, right? And it talks about if you come across this situation where you see this sort of thing, you shouldn't look in the pools. Yeah. You know? Uh, and there'll be mushrooms around and all this other stuff. So it's all mystical and stuff like that. So I took a couple of pictures, made a YouTube short for it, you know. But um, Yeah. Okay, so here's one. I like a kind of a legend. Tree one to- halo. Was that it? No. Okay. You know, it has to do with the pool because the trees grew, grew, grew together and where there's a hollow spot, it creates a water area where animals can drink. It's like a pool. It's like a small little pool. 
So I'm not sure what it's called. Uh, one time there was a boy, and the boy never wanted to grow up. And in fact, he told everyone that, uh, you know, hey, call him. He said, call me forever boy because he didn't want to be grown. That sounds like Peter Pan. Yeah. yeah. Know. Uh, when his friends would sit around and talk about, oh, when we get to be a man, you know, and when I get to be grown, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to be this, and I'm going to go here, I'm going to be, you know, whatever, right? And this boy would just go off and play by himself. He didn't want to hear it because he just never wanted to grow up. And finally, his father got real tired of this, and he basically said, forever boy, I will never call you that again. From now on, you're going to learn to be a man, and you're going to take responsibility for yourself, and you're going to stop playing all day long, and you're going to learn these things. <laughs> Right, mm-hmm. he's like you're not you're tired of messing around, man. It's time to grow up. He says, starting tomorrow, you're going to be you're going to go to your uncle's, and he's going to teach you everything that you are going to need to know. So he's off, he's going to send him off to the authoritarian uncle, right? Okay. So Forever Boy was broken hearted about what his father told him, and he couldn't stand the thought of growing up. And he went out to the river and he cried, and he cried so hard he didn't see his animal friends gather around him. And they were trying to tell him something. And they were trying to make him feel better. And finally, he thought he understood them, say, hey, come here tomorrow. Come come here early. And so he thought, you know, they just wanted to say goodbye to him, right? And so he drug his feet and he went home. And he couldn't even sleep because he was still so upset. So the next morning, he went out early, as he had promised, to meet his friends. And he was so sad because he couldn't bear the thought of telling him goodbye forever. So finally began to get the sense that they were trying to tell him something else. And that was to look behind him. And when he looked behind him, there they were, the little people, all the little people. They were smiling at him, laughing, running up to hug him. And they said, forever, boy, you don't have to grow up. You can stay with us forever. You can come with and be one of us, and you'll never have to grow up. And we will ask the creator to send a vision to your parents and let them know that you're safe. And you're doing all what you need to do. Okay. So uh, forever, boy, thought about it for a long time. But that's what he decided he needed to do. And he went with little people. And even today, when you're out in the woods and you see something and you just look, right? And it's not what you really thought it was. Or if you're fishing and you feel something on the end of the line and you're thinking it's the big trout, ever, the biggest trout ever, and you pull it in and it's like nothing. Like a stick that got tangled to your hook, you know? And he says, but that is, that's the little people. They're playing tricks on you so you'll laugh and keep young in your heart. Because that spirit of little people and forever boy, they keep us in our hearts. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. So, yeah. I kind of wish it was a little bit darker. You know what I mean? I mean, it probably is. I mean, yeah. <laughs> if you think so, cause about it. Because sometimes you go in the woods and you see stuff out of the corner of your eye and you're like, wow, I just watched that leaf turn into a freaking bird. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know, so I thought it was kind of neat. I'm like, oh, I like that, because I, I forgot about, you know, and learned about there was three different types of little people, and they have different names and stuff like that, but in the Fay Fairy folk, they have different names as well. And this place, we got all sorts of weird stuff around here. It, it is weird, you know, I'm like, wow. Well, like the part where you're talking about losing, you know, um, finding a knife or something like that, right? That bugs me because, okay, so I've lost a folding shovel out there, and I lost that. You lost a shovel too? I lost that months ago, and I told you, and that's why I had to reorder another one. The little folding shovels. Oh, uh, okay. I yeah. thought you meant you lost the the one that we keep in the van to dig and us I, out of trouble. And I lost that the same day that I got that cool video of that that witch's urn mushroom. Yeah. And that's the same day I lost it because it started raining harder. So it's probably out in that general area. Well, the day I lost my open L knife. Um, I kept seeing little dapples of light through the, the trees, Yeah, you know? And I'm like, are, is that, you know, sun, a little sunbeam, or is that a giant mushroom? And I kept getting led deeper and deeper into the woods because I thought I was finding mushrooms or a ghost pipe, and then I stopped myself and realized what was happening and decided I needed to leave. Very nice. Yeah. That's probably a smart thing to do. But leaving and... As I left, and I just hit spider web after spider web in the face, somewhere in that frantic, I've got a spider web in my face, I lost the knife. Yeah. So. It was a nice knife. It, I'm very mad. So if I find the knife or the shovel again, do I still have to ask permission for my, my stuff back? Yeah, you left it. Okay. Lost and found, man. It's in the woods. All right. But if you find something that doesn't belong to you, you know, that kind of thing, you should still ask. Um 
I think it's just, it's part of it because it's just part of the, the lore. Huh. Should ask for permission, you know, and thank thank the animals. So speaking of animals, let's talk about why the turkey gobbles. <laughs> Right. Okay. Okay, so we're going to talk about these animals, right? So the grouse used to have a fine voice and a good hello, right? Yeah. In in the ball play, because the animals would play together. Oh. Right, okay. so it's, it's a sport, right? They all play together, and they call it ball play. So all the animals and the birds used to play ball in those woods, in those days, I should say. It's like they were proud of a loud hello as the ball players of today. So they get out there, and they can make the noise. You know, the... You know what I mean? Like when you're playing, you're like, yeah, woo, hello, you know, that kind of thing, right? So the turkey had not a good voice. So he asked the grouse. He's like, hey, man, can you give me some lessons? And the grouse said, okay, I'll teach you. But, you know, at the same time, I I want to be compensated for my effort because evidently (laughs) the turkey does not have a good voice. So the grouse is like, what's in it for me, man? I want a living wage to coach you on this. (laughs) Uh, so the turkey promised to give him some of the feathers, some of his feathers, so the grouse could make uh, make himself a collar, right? Because you know collars are not right. So the grouse is, you know, okay, okay. I'll, you know, yeah, that's yeah. that's a fair trade. I'll I'll take some of your feathers so I can have a nice collar and teach you how to, you know, basically have a nice hello. So that's how the grouse got his collar of turkey feathers. So uh-huh. it looks like he's got turkey feathers around his neck. Grouse, very right? nice plumage. Yeah. Yes. So they began the lessons and the turkey learned real fast until the grouse thought it was basically time for him to try his voice. Okay. So the turkey was in it, right? And he's like, okay. And the grouse is like, it's your time. <laughs> right. He said, okay. So the grouse is like, all right, I'm going to stand on this hollow log. And when I give the signal by tapping on it, you must halloo as loudly as you can. Mm. Right. Okay. Setting him up. Here we go. He's going to prove his, his knowledge, what he learned. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when he got up on the log, ready, so he got up on the log, and he's ready to tap on it as a grouse does, because grouse do tap on stuff, because they tap on logs and stuff like that. Yeah. And it stirs up the insects that they eat, right? Yeah. So he's like, so he got up on the logs, ready to tap on it. Uh, but when he gave the signal, the turkey was so eager and excited that he could not raise his voice for a shout, but he only gobbled. And so, ever since then, he gobbles whenever he hears a noise. <laughs> this sounds like sounds like a horrible AGT America's Got Talent audition. Yeah. Like, all like right, he choked. You got two minutes, man. <laughs> and it's like, all right, I trained you. You're gonna sing. It's like, and the song starts, and like, <laughs> and now you he are choked. forever known as. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's so sad. Pretty much, Poor but that's the end of the story. Poor Turkey. Turkey has no redemption. That's, he choked. That's like he was so eager. Indigenous lessons are yep. like he misfired and look what happened. Tough. Now he's always gobbling. So I don't. I, I if I had to fig, figure out what, I think it's just basically saying you know. Look, I don't. I don't know what the lesson is. Learn it on your own. Take your time. Or what is it? Patience and don't patience. Choke. But it gives yeah. him the basically. He just gobbles forever now. Yeah, it's like one shot and done, man. He lost it. Mm-hmm. The grouse got this pretty turkey feather collar. Well, he had to be properly compensated for his time and effort. So. Well, I, I get all that, but it, like they don't usually they put like in these life lessons things. Is they put something like you know the turkey was cocky or something like that? He's going to show. Nope. So it seeming seemingly like the turkey was just an overall good guy, just wanted to do better. Choked. Now he's stuck forever. <laughs> the shame of gobbling instead of doing that. You know? But he is delicious. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, he is. So speaking of delicious, I think we're going to go ahead and take a second and wrap up the podcast. We've been talking for a little while. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let us know. Yeah. So, yeah, that's all we got. Little oh. people of Cherokee, how a turkey gobbles, animals attacking, okra attacking. Yep. Three-legged wampus cat thing. What more do you need? Uh, we need people to join our Facebook group or follow us on social. So be sure to check us out on TikTok, Instagram. We have an official Facebook page, but we also have a fairly active group. We'd love it if more people would join the group and interact with us, uh, send us feedback or show suggestions or just share some stuff. Uh, feel free to join in um, and you can find links to that stuff in the show notes. 
That's right. Yeah. Hey, there you go. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, let us know. We do appreciate you re- uh, reaching out. If you do, and if you listen, we very much appreciate that too. You can listen to us on YouTube as well. So, yeah. And if you're it, remotely at all interested in, in the stupid tripod, it's on Amazon. There's a link. You know, otherwise, yeah, whatever. <laughs> do what you got to do. Anyway, see you later. Take it easy. Bye bye. Bye. Won't you please?